Hello everyone, this is the start of module two and it is part one of module two. And module two in our course is going to be focusing on chapter three in our textbook, which is the chapter on properties of pure substances. And we're gonna start this chapter by looking at the phase change process of pure substances. So if we remember from our module one, we defined the pure substance as an as a homogeneous substance that is invariable in chemical composition. So I'm not going to rewrite it because we already have it in module one, but essentially it's homogeneous and invariable in chemical composition. And we had said that it can exist in more than one phase. So a pure substance, just to review, can exist in more than one phase. And what is a phase? A phase is saying liquid, vapor, or solid, for example. Okay, those would be three vapor, three and this could also be called a gas, for example. So these would be example of phases. And we also had said that air is a mix of gases, but it is pure as long as it stays a gas. So air is a pure substance as long as it stays a gas and doesn't become a liquid or a solid. Okay, so going from there, let's look at what a phase change of pure substances would look like. And what I would like to do for this is to start directly with an example with a certain initial state and go from there. So we remember that we had defined last class and last module, we had defined a state, we had defined a path, and we had defined a process. And so I'll let you think about those and look, look those up if you don't remember exactly what they are. But let's start with an example of what happens when we have a phase change. Okay, and we're gonna start with a piston cylinder assembly. Okay, we're gonna be using a lot of piston cylinder assemblies throughout the semester. So uh, be ready to draw them and understand them very well. Okay, so we're gonna start with a piston cylinder assembly and we're going to create a first state. And a state is essentially just a list of different properties that we can come up with at a state, and that defines our first state. So we're going to define state one. And state one is going to have a piston cylinder assembly, as shown here. And that piston cylinder arrangement at initial state. So this is our initial state is going to have a mass of one kilogram of fluid. Okay, we can say that it's any fluid, but we're going to say that it's water. So it has a mass of one kilogram of water. It has a pressure of one atmosphere. So there's one atmosphere of pressure on this piston right here and on the mix inside, so the water inside. And the temperature is gonna start at 20 degrees Celsius, okay? And we're gonna define this as state one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little one in front of pressure, temperature, and mass. And we know that at 20 degrees Celsius, from experience, we know that we have liquid water. Now, liquid water is also called, in thermodynamics, we can also call it compressed water, so we can call it compressed liquid, 
or a subcooled liquid. Or sometimes called also subcooled liquid. So these three terms can be used interchangeably. So we can either call it just liquid, or we can also a little bit more technical, we can call it a compressed liquid or a subcooled liquid. Now, what we're going to do with this water is we're going to um, we're going to add heat to it. So, in the first instance, there's no heat to the water. The water's at 20 degrees at one atmosphere and we're going to start adding heat to it from the outside from the surroundings okay so we have our water we have our control mass of water which is one kilogram and we're going to add some heat to it and we're also going to assume that the piston is free to move up or down Okay, so the piston is free to move up and down, which means that if the piston has to move up because the volume is going to increase, it's just going to move up. And if the temperature, for example, cools or something like that, it might move down a little bit. Okay, so that's state one. So when we start adding heat, what happens? So let's look at a state two down the line. So after a certain amount of time, we're going to define a state two. So we start adding heat. What happens if we start adding heat to the water? Try to think of what happens. What happens is the temperature of the water is going to increase, right? So we can say that temperature starts increasing And it starts increasing to what point? It starts increasing until the water starts boiling. And what's going to happen to the piston when the temperature starts increasing and the water starts to boil? What do you think happens to the piston? Does it stay in place? Does it go down? Does it go up? the piston will actually start moving up because when we increase the, the temperature, we actually increase the spacing between the particles. And this is not necessarily true while it's going to change very slightly when the, the, when, the, um, when the fluid is a liquid. However, once we get to that gas phase and that boiling phase, that boiling phase, we start getting some movement, some significant movement in the piston because a gas always takes up more space than a liquid, for example, as we know from experience. So the additional heat that we put in is actually going to make our liquid change to vapor. We're going to have what's called a phase change. So the phase of our fluid or the phase of our water is going to change from liquid to vapor, okay? And what's really important to understand about this phase change is that during a phase change, our temperature stays constant. So why is that? The temperature, for example, if you were boiling, if you let's say you're boiling a pot of water because you want to cook some pasta or something like that, you would get the water up to 100 degrees Celsius or something like that, which would be the boiling point of water, usually at atmospheric pressure. And would the temperature keep increasing or 
would the temperature stay at 100 degrees and you would have boiling? The temperature actually would stay constant because all the energy from the added heat would now be used to change the phase, so to go from liquid to vapor. So there's sort of a plateau in temperature while this phase change is happening. So we can say that at state two, so if we look at our, our piston cylinder assembly at state two, okay, we have all this water here inside. At state two, we have, so let's label it state two. At state two, we have a temperature two that's equal to 100 degrees Celsius and a pressure two that is equal to what? What is the pressure at two going to be equal to? Does the pressure increase when you increase the temperature or not? And this really comes from our statement here above. We said that we assume that the piston is free to move up or down. So if the piston is free to move up or down, what we actually have is the piston moves up if it wants to move up or it moves down if it wants to move down. Now what happens with this is that if we just show the piston and we have pressure atmospheric on one side and this piston is free to move, the pressure counteracting that pressure is also going to be pressure atmospheric all the time, even if we increase the temperature. If we start increasing the temperature, the piston will usually move up and will allow for the pressure to always stay at pressure atmospheric. So if the piston is free to move, you can remember as a rule that the pressure will always be equal to the pressure of the outside. Now, in a different example, if we had a closed container and we, we didn't have a piston and the closed container was just closed with water in it and we would heat the water up, okay, so we add heat to the water, what would happen to the pressure if we're not allowing it to move, if we're not allowing it to expand? If we're not allowing our fluid to expand, the pressure will increase. So essentially what happens in a piston cylinder assembly, in this example here, is we have our volume going up. Okay, so our volume goes up, but our pressure stays constant. Whereas here, our volume stays constant in a constant volume uh, container, but our pressure goes up when the temperature goes up. And importantly, during the phase change, the temperature stays constant. So, the reason why the temperature stays constant, just to write it out, we already talked about it, but just to write it out, is that when a phase change occurs, all the energy from heat is used for the phase change. And therefore the temperature will stay constant. No heat is meant to add temperature. So now, once we reach 100 degrees, so the first moment we reach 100 degrees with our fluid, we have at state two, so state two, T2 is equal to 100 degrees, pressure two is equal to one atmosphere. We have a temperature two of 100 degrees and we have, we still have liquid water. So we still have fully liquid water at the first point we hit 100 degrees. Now, once we hit state three, state three is going to be defined as a point in our evaporation process where we have our piston cylinder assembly. And now, instead of having 
100% liquid water, we now have a mix between liquid water, and I'll write H2O, and let me write vapor H2O. So now we have a mix of vapor H2O and liquid H2O. And this is called a saturated liquid vapor mixture. And we can simplify that to a saturated mix. So we don't have to write the whole thing. So you can simplify that name to saturated mix. But essentially what happens is that the phases, the two phases, so liquid and gas or liquid and vapor, coexist in equilibrium. So essentially we are halfway through our evaporation process. We've evaporated half to gas and the rest is still liquid. And our temperature three, since we're still evaporating and all the energy from the heat is used for the phase change, temperature three is still 100 degrees Celsius. And pressure three is still one atmosphere because our piston is still free to move. Now, once we start having vapor in our mix with our liquid, we actually note an increase in volume. So the volume is going to increase once we start having gas because the particles in a gas are much more spaced out than, um, than in a liquid. Okay, when it was all a liquid, we only saw very small changes in volume because a liquid is pretty much non-compressible. It doesn't compress or, or expand much. However, once we went to a liquid vapor mixture, we now have vapor and vapor expands a lot. So what we can conclude from this is that what is the definition of saturation temperature? So we, we came up with a new name called saturated liquid vapor mix. So the saturation temperature saturation temperature is equal to a temp at which it's a temperature at which vaporization takes place at a given pressure. And what does vaporization mean? Vaporization is essentially the same term as boiling. It just means boiling in thermodynamics terms. So we can say that vaporization is equivalent to boiling. It means turning liquid into vapor. Okay. And that given pressure here in this definition is also called the saturation pressure. So if the pressure is one atmosphere, we know that our boiling temperature is going to be around 100 degrees Celsius. If our pressure was different, our boiling temperature could be different or our vaporization temperature could be different. Now, What's important to state from this is that at temperature of saturation and pressure of saturation, so whenever the liquid, whenever our substance is at saturation and, and we have a certain temperature for saturation and a certain pressure for that saturation, 
we can say that a pure substance may exist as one, a fully saturated liquid So that would be when we reach state two. So it's when you just reach your temperature sat. And if you're not 100% following right now, just keep following because it'll become clear once we start uh, drawing what it looks like, but also we're going to be using this all semester. So just make sure that you follow along for now, even if it's not 100% clear what all of this means. Just keep listening and keep trying to take notes and understanding what's happening. Number two, it can exist as a saturated vapor. So the substance, the pure substance can exist as a saturated vapor. What does that mean? That would mean that we have 100% vapor, but we're still at the saturation temperature. So we're still at T sat. So at 100 degrees Celsius, when we reach state three, we see that we have, for example, half liquid, half vapor. Then we could have a state four where we have 100% vapor and now we're at 100 degrees. And if we keep adding more heat to that vapor, then eventually we'll get to, eventually we will get to uh, a higher temperature once everything is vapor. So this is the point where it essentially exits saturation is when we have saturate, saturated vapor. And the third one we already talked about is saturated mix. And you can write it as sat mix or saturated mix. And this means that it's part liquid and part vapor. And in this phase here, we need to define how much is liquid and how much is vapor. So we need to have some sort of definition of how much of each you have. And this definition is called the quality of our fluid or the quality of our substance. So the quality is just a term that is equal to the ratio of mass of vapor to the total mass. So for example, if you have, let's say we know that our mass total is equal to one kilogram, right? We have one kilogram of water in that example. And let's say that we measure the mass of vapor to be equal to 0.2 kilograms. So that means that there's 0.8 kilograms of liquid still and 0.2 kilograms of vapor. We can therefore say that our quality, which is defined by the value X, okay, it's a capital X for quality. We can say that it's equal to the mass of vapor over the mass total. And therefore, it would be equal to 0 0.2. So our quality would be 0 0.2. That means we have 0 0.2 kilograms of vapor and we still have 0 0.8 kilograms of liquid. It's just a way for us to be able to define in a saturated mix how much is vapor, how much is liquid. If we can't define that, it makes it very hard for us to define the actual state. We need to know the quality to define the state when the mixture is saturated, when that mixture, not really mixture, but when the substance is saturated.
Okay, so state four can be defined as the following step. So if we keep heating it up, if we keep heating up our 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 substance and we keep heating up our water, eventually all of our water is going to turn to vapor. So all of our water is going to be vapor. And once it's all vapor, sorry about that, once it's all vapor, we still have temperature 4 is equal to 100 degrees Celsius as soon as it turns all to vapor. We're going to say that the that the definition of the state is saturated vapor. So that's our our pure substance is going to be called saturated vapor and we still have a pressure for of one atmosphere. Our pressure does not change. Okay. Now, once we reach this point, if we add any further heat, if we add any further heat, what's going to happen? So if we add any further heat to state four, what's going to happen to our temperature? Is the temperature going to stay the same now that it's fully a vapor or is it going to go up? The temperature is now going to go up after we've reached this saturated vapor point. And temperature is going to go up and volume is going to go up as well. Okay, we have a vapor. And once we have a vapor, if we keep heating the vapor, we usually have a higher volume as well. And finally, if we keep heating it, we can define a new state, state five, with more heating, where we have, for example, temperature five is equal to 120 degrees Celsius, for example. So we'll call it 120 degrees Celsius, and we now have We still have our fully vaporized water. So this is still water and it's still a vapor. But now we have our temperature of five is now greater than temperature of saturation, right? Our temperature of saturation is 100. Temperature five is 120 degrees. So what we call this term, when the temperature is above saturation, or when the temperature is above the boiling point of water, we now call this state superheated vapor. Okay, so we have superheated vapor, which is essentially our final state in our in our system. Now, let's try and summarize this whole thing with a property diagram. So let's try and, and define this. Let's plot what happened on a property diagram. So let, let's define what a property diagram is. A property diagram is just a diagram that allows us to visualize two properties in relation to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a TV diagram. And what a TV diagram is, is a temperature versus volume diagram. And I'm going to draw it like this. And what we're going to have is we can essentially define the volume of our fluid. So this would be V1, volume one, which we haven't really defined, but we just assume it's gonna be something along those lines. And we know that our initial temperature was 20 degrees. So T1 was equal to 20 degrees. So we have this starting point for our diagram. Then we started heating up the fluid and what happened to our fluid when we started heating it up? It went up to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And this is point two. Now volume changed only very slightly. 
Volume changed slightly because we have a liquid. And we said that when we have a liquid, we have very little change. So liquid, we said we have very little change from V1 to V2. So we have very little change from volume one to volume two. And now we reach point two. Now from point two, we also know that the quality here, or X is equal to zero. We have 0% vapor. So remember, X is equal to mass of vapor over mass of total. And we know that as soon as we reach 100 degrees, we still have 100% liquid and 0% vapor. But now we're at 100 degrees and we're at saturation. So what happens now? We're going to move along a line of constant temperature. And now we're going to start increasing in volume because we're increasing the amount of vapor we have compared to the amount of liquid. And we're going to reach 0.3 somewhere in the middle. So if we reach 0.3 somewhere in the middle, we have 50% vapor. Okay, and it, that's defined by our 0.3, our state 3, which is right here. We have a saturated liquid vapor mix, and we can say that we have 50% vapor and 50% liquid, for example. Okay, this is just an example, but let's say we have 50% vapor and 50% liquid for state three. So state three is defined as 50% vapor, so we know that we have X is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, our quality is equal to 0 0.5. We then keep moving along, so let me just put arrows here. We then keep moving along to state four, where we now have the state four where we have 100% vapor and it's called saturated vapor because we just reached that final point where X is equal to one. So now we have full vapor and we reach this point where we have, so we have volume three is here, volume four is here. And then what do you think happens after that? What do you think happens when we reach four, to 0.5. Now we're starting to increase in temperature. And we said that the increase in temperature is also going to create an increase in pressure, uh, an increase in volume, sorry, not pressure. So now the volume and temperature are going to start increasing up to five. And five, we can define as superheated vapor, as we had said earlier. And our temperature is now higher. And this is obviously not to scale, but it's just an illustration. We have 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, I'm just trying to exaggerate the size so that you can see that something is happening. This ends part one of module two, and we'll see you in part two of module two, uh, where we will continue discussing property diagrams and the different properties of uh, thermodynamic substances.